This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey everybody, my name is Mike Hermes and welcome to my channel. Well guys, today we're going to do some prep work for a game engine. What we're going to do is we're going to create a, a sci-fi wall panel and we're going to texture it, we're going to create a normal map, ambient occlusion map, specular map and so forth and we're going to stick that stuff all together and load it up in a game engine, okay? So that's all there's to it. Here we go. Alright guys, here we go. Well, we got Photoshop open, we got our Quixel Suite open, and we're going to start off by creating a simple new uh, file, okay? So we're going to go to File and, sorry, not open, File and New, and we'll do, let's do 1000 by 1000, there we go. And I'm going to open up Endu, and it's immediately going to ask me whether I want to change this file into a normal map. So I'm going to click on this guy and it's going to process as you can see. There you go. And now that that's done, I'm going to go up to my marquee tool here and I'm going to use the uh, rectangular. We're just going to drag out a, uh, a rectangle up here. And it's gonna ask me again, do I want to change that? Yes, I do. There you go. Here I can decide whether I want to increase the uh, size or not. So let's do something like that. That's about right. And what I'll do is I'll uh, make sure I got that layer selected right there. I'm gonna go to this guy. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and just click and drag on it to bring one down here. Okay, that looks all right. And then what we'll do is we'll go in again and uh, we'll go to this guy right here and we'll use our rounded rectangle tool. There we go. And we'll just create something like this. Actually, let's make it a bit larger, like so. And again, it's going to ask me whether I want to process this or not into a, uh, a normal map shape. So let's uh, just give the system a sec. And there you go. We're going to add one more shape similar to that one. And we're just going to go in and make one that's a bit smaller we'll do that and i'm uh, pausing my system on occasion because it seems to be quite slow today for some reason uh, it's, this is not too bad and um, we'll just have to wait until he asks me whether i want to convert that as well there you go we're going to do that and this one i want to uh, face inwards so we're going to reverse that one Right, there you go. Uh, we're going to change this one so it's facing inwards. So I'm going to go to slant. I'm going to go to uh, down, I think. Hang on. Yeah, there we go. Right, so you get the picture, right? This is how you can add shapes and forms and so forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to save out this normal map and then we're going to start on the texturing bit. Okay, hang on. Okay, so that's saved out. We're going to close uh, this. We're going to close um, Quixel as well. And we'll just uh, clean that all up. So we don't really need this right now, not in this shape or form. Uh, so let's see, I already saved this out, we're all good. So I'm going to go to File and New, and we're going to create a new file in the same dimensions. Hit OK, there we go. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go in and we're going to add a new layer and make sure that we're not second layer. And then we're going to go to file and place embedded. I'm going to take my normal map and I'm going to place that, hit enter. And then I'm going to go into opacity and bring that way down so I can see where I'm at. Okay. Now, as far as texturing is concerned, uh, I want to make sure that I'm on layer one when I'm doing that. And the first thing we need to do is to establish kind of a base. So 
kind of a uh, metal gray looking texture. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so I just had to uh, step out to get the right texture for that. So we're on layer one. We're going to go to file and again, we're going to do place embedded and I'm going to use this rusty steel, which is a good fit looks like. So I'm just going to turn off my normal map so I can see it. Okay. I have to place it first. Sorry, hit enter. And there you go. Yeah, looks fine. So that's our base, and then we're going to start to add uh, some elements to it. And again, make sure that we're on that layer. So I want to create a kind of a, a yellow and black danger uh, thingy on these here. So I'll actually do that on a new layer. Just so if I want to change anything that I can do that. And again, I'm going to go in to place embedded. I'm going to take this guy. And we're going to start to move that into position. Uh, let's put it up here so we can see it. I'll just hit enter here. Hang on. There we go. Take my band layer. Okay, so now we need to decide. I'm going to hit control plus to zoom in. We need to decide if we want it to have it all the way on that bevel or not. And I guess that would be the best choice to do it that way. So this all seems to fit okay. I'm going to move over to this end. And let's bring that in. There we go. So that looks okay. We're going to hit enter. We're going to hit control minus to zoom out. I'm going to hover over this guy and hold alt so I can copy it and drag it down. And again, let's make sure that we have a good fit. There we go. Now I'm probably want to get some sort of texture going on here. So again, I'll create a new layer and on that layer and I'll just call this, uh, hang on. Uh, let's see, I'll take my text and we'll come up with some random number. Let's do Y Z dash two five nine. And then what we'll do is we will uh, hang on first. Make sure we've got the right color here. Let's turn that off. Let's try that again. Black, black, black. There we go. Y Z two five nine. Sounds right to me. Okay. We're gonna make this nice and big. Let's get a different font. So we're gonna apply this. We're gonna select that, and then we're gonna find a font that looks a bit more industrial. Yeah, that's fine. So <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to scale that up. I want my normal map visible. I have to place it first. I'm going to rotate it and make sure we're at 90 degrees. Exactly. Maybe scale it up some more. And I'm just going to park it over here for now. I'm going to hit enter. So I can now turn back on my normal map. And now I can see where I want this and how large I want it to be. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if we can get this level with this guy. Yeah, that's fine. Now I want to bring the opacity down a bit. So again, I'll turn, I'll hit enter, turn off my normal map, take the opacity and bring that down just so it looks a little bit faded. And then on our bands, We'll do the same, not too much. Let's uh, crank this one up just a little. And then turn this back on. Okay. So now what we can do is we can take a, uh, a brush. 
We'll go up here, we'll take this guy, so it's fairly faint. And let's see, am I in a new layer? Not yet. No, I am, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna right click, look at the brush type. Okay, maybe a bit smaller than that. And then we're gonna do an opacity, we're bringing that down to maybe 6% or so. I'm gonna turn off my normal map to do a test. Okay, we'll bring that up a bit. Yeah, that's a bit better, okay. So, step backward, there we go. We're gonna turn on our normal map, but we're gonna make sure that we're on that layer, okay? As you can see, it's still not gone. So, step back. I'll just do it this way. Okay, that's better. All right, so um, let's see, where were we? We're gonna turn this guy back on. We're at our brush. There we go. And we're gonna just to start to kind of mark these areas where we have the bubbles okay and we can do that around these areas as well and just depending on how intricate you made this you can add more or less detail, okay? Okay, let's turn this off for a sec. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and we're gonna increase the size of our brush quite a bit. And then let's uh, change this color maybe to something fairly bright red. Let's do a test here. And we're just gonna do a couple of areas, you know, just to, I don't know, make it look a little bit bloody or whatnot. And then what always is a cool color for sci-fi is this kind of greenish stuff. And what we'll do is we'll just kind of add a little bit of a, a glow at the top there. And maybe at the bottom, there we go. And you can play around with that all you want. But you know, all in all, this is uh, pretty much uh, what we're gonna do. Then what we'll do next is we'll uh, select our normal layer and we will um, delete it. We don't need that here. Then we're gonna select all of these guys and we are going to merge these layers we're going to go to file save as and we'll save that as a uh, jpeg and we'll call this diffuse okay then we're going to go in to image adjustments and we're gonna make this black and white and then hit OK and then we're gonna go into adjustments and brightness and contrast let's make that fairly bright and a very high contrast okay and we'll use this as uh, an ambient occlusion layer okay so again, I'll save that out as a JPEG, and I'll call that AO. 
and there's not going to be a lot of specularity here but I just want to have the option to use it if I need to so for that I'll again make something manually here and we'll go into the brightness and contrast levels for that I want it to be quite bright and I'll bring down the contrast a bit so it will start off pretty shiny and I'll be able to tone that down if I need to okay so we're gonna hit OK there file and save as and I'll just call this uh, specular and we'll save that up okay so next step we're gonna jump into Maya create a simple panel apply all these layers to it and then uh, upload it into our game engine okay here we go okay guys here we are in Maya we're gonna take a, a simple plane and we're gonna hit control a to open up our attribute editor and we're gonna set the uh, subdivision to one by one so as you can see this is an extremely low poly object it has a face count of one and the only thing we need to do is to make sure that we maintain a square shape okay so we'll uh, scale this up my skill here is in centimeters we don't want it to be extremely small once we get it into our uh, engine so we'll do something like that and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click in object mode assign new material actually officially we need to UV this but the UV should be okay we'll go up to UV and UV editor and there you go perfect square on a perfect square so nothing going on there we're gonna right click and assign new material we're gonna use a Lambert actually let's do a Blin, because that will give us the option to plug in specularity then we're gonna go next to the color we're gonna hit the checkered box and we're gonna go up to um, file select file folder and we're gonna go to desktop um, there we go and panel and we'll take our diffuse we'll hit this uh, checkered sphere right here so that is that as you can see it's quite shiny okay and then what we'll do is we'll take in our normal map so we'll select our panel we'll go to our blend to our bump map section again file we're gonna apply this not as a bump but as a tangent space normal uh, let's bring the bump depth down to let's say 0.2 for now we'll take our file folder and uh, let's take our normal okay and let's have a look and see what that looks like okay so we need to tweak the depth a bit And the best way to see this is to create a light. Let's go to point light. Hit W, pull that up. Hit seven on our keyboard. And you can see it, it's not baked, but you can see it fairly okay. And then we have our specularity. Now I know that size-wise this turned out okay. Um, I'm just not crazy about showing this in Maya. So what I'll do before we go into the game engine is uh, load these guys up in our uh, uh, in uh, sorry in Marmoset, and uh, then we'll be ready to go. Uh, before we do that, make sure that the UV is rotated in the correct direction. So I'm gonna right click and go to shell, take that guy, hit E to rotate, hold down J while I snap. And let's have a look here. Let's get the light, we'll hit six so we can see it better. Okay, that messed up things a bit. 
There we go. All right. Just trying to figure out what the rotation was that we were using. And keep in mind that, uh, yeah, that's the one. Keep in mind that what's happening right now is our texture is rotating, our normal map is not. So this is the look that we created, remember? Okay, so let's uh, jump over to our Marmoset and load stuff up there. Okay guys, well, we're in uh, Marmoset. Now what I did is I exported our simple uh, single plane out of Maya as an OBJ. So I'm gonna load that up in Marmoset here. I'm gonna to go to File and uh, Import Model. Here we go, Panel, OBJ. And this will be a good demonstration to show you that things can look quite different um, whether you open it in one program or the other. Um, I was not too thrilled with the look that we just had in Maya. I'm quite sure it will look better in Marmoset, okay? Now, here is our panel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the default material. I'm going to select that. I'm going to go to the normal map section and select that and apply it. Then we'll go to the albedo and I'll plug in my diffuse map. We'll scroll down to specular, take that. And then I'm going to go down to uh, the occlusion map section and add occlusion. There we go. And this is this guy, okay? Now, without tweaking any settings, I'm just gonna left click and drag and drop that on my object here. And let's have a look. Now, first of all, you can see that um, the normal map is positioned correctly. So is um, the texture map, so that's cool. Um, I'll switch out my sky image here so you can see that it has quite an effect. So we'll double click on this, got a preset, Let's try something very different. Okay. There we go. We'll take, uh, let's see, we'll take that because it's outdoors, done. And now let's see if we can tweak these settings a little bit. Okay. So we're gonna start by going into our gloss and turning that off. And then in our specularity map, we're gonna bring that value way down. And as we do, you see that the color shows up, okay? So that's cool. And then we're gonna go into our occlusion and we're gonna bring that down as well. And as we do that, you see the green popping up a bit more, which is kind of cool. Maybe we can bring specularity back up just a little. Kind of gives that copper look to it. And for the most part, let's see, this is looking okay. And now what we can do is we can start to tweak our settings a bit. So this is our panel so far. Uh, I want some additional lighting. So I'm gonna click over here and I'm just gonna add a bit of a light into our scene here like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the backdrop completely black. So we got a good shot here and I think in the middle is our light source so don't be worried about that. Let's see if we can do something with that specularity or take a different light. As you can see, there's a huge difference based on what you select. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm gonna make my backdrop completely black, like so, and make sure that we have a good site here. I'm going to go up to my main camera and we're going to go in and tweak the tone mapping a bit. Let's bring that up a little. Increase the contrast. 
saturation. You can bring it down and make it kind of black or white. I want some color in it. Let's sharpen it up a bit. All good. And then I'm gonna go to my render view. I have a one to one ratio, that's good. And the only thing we need to do is just hit capture and image. Okay, so now if we go to show output folder, uh, right here, there's a screenshot, looks okay, I think. And then the only thing left is to take our model and put it into our game engine. So here we go. Okay, guys, <clears throat> we're in a UE4, as you can see. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna import our uh, prop, our model. So we're gonna go to import, and uh, let's make sure we're in the right folder here. We're gonna go to 3D resources, the panel. This is my OBJ. And I'm just gonna go with import all, and we'll give that a sec. Okay, so now that we have um, our panel here, I'm gonna right click on it. And hang on, uh, sorry. I'm going to right click on my diffuse, that's my main. I'm gonna click on create material. And then I'm gonna double click on this material here, which opens this guy up. And I'm gonna start to plug in the, um, the other maps that I have, okay? So for that, I need to import my other maps. So I'm gonna to go to import and I'm gonna select my specular, my AO uh, and my normal map and hit open. And there they are. And then I'm gonna take them and drag them into my field here. All right, so let's just uh, get them in position here. and make sure I can see what's what, which is a bit tricky right now. Okay, so oh, it takes some time to load up. There we go, all right. Okay, so this guy, we are going to left click and drag, and let's just compare these two here. They're pretty close. The one down here is my specular, so I'm gonna left click and let's pop that in here. And then this guy, we're gonna go with AO. And this is our normal map, and we're gonna plug it in here into our normal map, okay? We're gonna hit apply. We're gonna move this out of the way. And then we're gonna take our, uh, where is our object? Um, What is it called? Okay, so that's gonna be our uh, our blin here, and I'm just gonna left click and drag and pull that in. And as you can see, it's quite large. So we're gonna scale that down a bit. So there it is, our panel OBJ. Let's bring that in. And let's bring that up. Hit F to zoom in so we can see it. Okay, and then we're gonna take the uh, material that we created. Just make sure I do this right, guys. Okay, guys, I found it. It's the diffuse material too. Um, and the reason that I sometimes get confused is because I need to put in the correct nomenclature and I'm just lazy like that, okay? So this is our object, we can uh, scale it you can see that the uh, the normal map works fine uh, we're just gonna zoom that out so we can see where we're at i'm just gonna hit w to uh, move that down a bit we'll hit r to scale it And just to move it a little bit. And I'm gonna hit E to rotate this because I want it to be facing correctly, obviously. 
the way we intended it to be. And there you have it. And then, like I said, you can move that if you like. And just by doing that, you can create panels, okay? Now, I'll take these and move them back. Just to show you that we can hit the play button. And there are our big panels, okay? So that's pretty much uh, all there is to it. So if you have any questions, let me know. And I'd really appreciate it if you guys would uh, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, at least if you like my videos. And uh, that said, I'd love to see you guys again. Bye.